I realized um, that I could take an inhaler. So I went to the doctor, she didn't know it, I got a prescription and I got an inhaler and all this. And uh, I found a pair of cats, they were brothers, to give her for a surprise. And it was quite a surprise. And we held on to those for some time. I wanted to name them, and the names that I chose, do you remember what I chose? Stop it and go away. Stop it and go away. <laughs> I wanted to name these two cats, Stop It and Go Away, so I could always call them, Stop It, come here, Stop It, go away, go away, come here, go away. That didn't work. But the other day I dreamt about that, that we did have the cats, and we did name them Stop It and, uh, and Away, Go Away, call them Away. And, and that mixed into our fishing trip when we on our, our anniversary, maybe because we just drove down that area. We had... We went camping for our anniversary and uh, ended up uh, camping down at Monticello, Monticello, Mon Montebello, it's close enough, Montebello, and uh, they had a, uh, a, a, a pond there, they had, they had a small lake and such, and for the first time, you see it's so important because it's the first time I've ever been fishing, it's also the last time I've ever been fishing, Roger says he's going to take me, um, in a stocked pond, I think I'm the only person that can't catch a fish in a stocked pond. <laughs> Donna did marvelous. She would pick one, she'd go, come over here, come over here, and I'm stubborn, I stay where I am, and so she pulls out a fish, and she calls me to all these areas when she's pulling out fish. But anyway, in this dream, I dreamt that, uh, uh, when I was cleaning them, uh, if you remember that, that one, that, 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 that old guy there, he loaned me his, his, uh, his, his knife, which I realized was quite an honor, and I dreamt that I was down there cleaning them, and uh, I had a piece of the fish, and I kind of threw it out off the pier there, and, and the one cat, uh, stop it, jumped out after it, and this huge trout swallowed the cat. Oh. <laughs> big, big fish. It's a nightmare. But if you think that's something, the next piece I threw out there, you should have seen the size of that fish that got away. You should have seen the size of the fish that got away. Boy, that was a lot of work. <laughs> Those who didn't get the double entendre there, the uh, fishermen were always bragging. There is a story uh, of a um, lion that was raised with goats for whatever reason. It's a folk tale about actually a tiger, not a lion, was brought up with a herd of goats. And from the day his eyes opened, all that he saw were goats. He never saw another tiger. So this became the story of his life. The tiger actually munched on grass. He rested and butted heads with the goats for recreation and learned to bleat in sort of an odd way, if you can imagine a tiger bleating or whatever. And once in a while, there was a nagging voice inside of him in this folk tale saying that you don't belong to this life. You don't belong. But always he put it aside as, as, as a fantasy, probably like the dream I had, something disturbing, intrusion in his world of dreams. If his present life didn't satisfy him, he just marked it off as a discontent. Yeah, everybody has in their lives, in their lifestyle. So he, a tiger, stayed with the goats, lived the goat's way of life because he believed that that was the only life that he had to be. Then one day, a, a, another tiger came into the clearing, and he was all tiger. That tiger grew up, knew who he was, and he looked into the clearing, he spotted the goats, he saw dinner, he roared, the earth shook, and he bounded out there, and all the goats fled in terror. But the tiger who had grown up with them stopped, and, and he wanted to stay. The, the tiger, roaring tiger, didn't seem to scare him. The roar from the edge of the forest had stirred some of this, this lost memory that was deep inside of him. And he kind of flexed his automatic reflex to, to challenge from the forest. And the tiger at the edge was, it, it was, wake, the, he, he was awakened, his life was wakened. And, and he knew now that he was something that he had never been before. And he knew that he could not go back. And the reason why this folk tale has been used many times this third Sunday of Easter is that we have our disciples, tigers, now living in the midst of, of goats. 
lions now living in the world of sheep that need to realize that they, they're not what they used to be and they can't go back. The 21st chapter of John really forms kind of an epilogue to the resurrection story, but it's an important one. Uh, what do those disciples do or what did they do after Jesus ascended into heaven? Actually, before Jesus sent into heaven, but after Jesus had appeared to them for the second time. It might not be clear exactly what they did, but one thing that they do know, we do know, is that they went back to the life that they knew. And that's the point that I'm driving to here. They went fishing. They had seen their Lord resurrected twice now. But yet, what do you do? They went back to the life that they knew. They went fishing. Verse 3 tells us that that night they caught nothing. And then from the edge of the shoreline, almost like from the edge of the forest with the tiger, a voice calls to them. They recognize the voice. And something calls and stirs inside them. It tells them to cast their nests on the other side of the boat. And scripture doesn't tell us exactly why they listened to that voice, but maybe it had a familiar ring to it, an authority, maybe calling something out of their, their dream. States. Maybe they were willing to try anything new to catch some fish. We just don't know, but we do know the result. Is that a huge, huge catch of fish resulted in. And when they heard the voice, they knew and they go, it's the Lord. You see, these disciples are like us in our endeavors to do things our own way and on our own way. The disciples went fishing. They had gone from the joy of resurrection back to the ordinary and ordinariness or to the ordinary ways of their life as if nothing more had changed they had been called to a new life a new life by a voice that empowered them and gave them a new way of doing things and now they heard that voice again but they chose instead to be like the goat they chose to ignore the life that they had been called to. It was that voice from the shore that called them again back to a new life, a life in which fishing, that's that metaphor being used here for evangelism, is successful because it, it listens to and is responsive to the one who calls us to the task. In his book, and I'll get back on tax here, by William Willimon of Duke University, he says he recalls one thing his mother used to always tell him, and it is the title of his first book, and it is Remember Who You Are. And with all of my stumbling, that's the point that I'm getting to, is that the disciples, like the tiger who was being called, he was called to remember who you are. You see this in movies when, when the coach is trying to, to, to work up his team. He's going, remember who you are. You're, you're titans. Remember who you are. Or when the mother tells the daughter or the son going out on prom night, now remember who you are. Yeah, that, you're, that you're my daughter and you behave accordingly. Or salesmen, they would go out on a task and the sales manager, remember who you are, you're the best. Remember who you are. Well, here we have the disciples who are being called, remember who you are. You're not fishermen of fish any longer. The disciples that morning, as they fished without success, they were called to the shore to remember who you are. Jesus was reminded that they're his children, that they're his, that they've been given a mission to do, that the mission would not and could not be successful if they don't listen to his guidance and his presence. The post-resurrection stories of Jesus, which we focus on now these weeks after Easter, they help us remind us who we are. They'll validate the stories of the resurrection for us and for the early church, for the Christian community. But they serve to do much more than that. These stories help remind us. Yes, we know that Easter has come and gone, but they help remind us that the, the resurrection